How are you? You uh, uh, the, the little quote in the paper was saying that you didn't like being in the public eye, but you sort of felt that it's something you had to do. Do you do you still feel that way? I do. And after five years, you're getting used to not being private at all. Mm. Yes. Do you get the feeling sometimes there's people chasing you all around everywhere trying to take down notes about things you say and do? And uh... No, I don't. You don't? I know. Should I? Well, I don't know. They seem to be constantly quoting you in newspapers and uh, constantly God. looking for something to talk about. You God, know? I haven't been quoted for about a year. I'm getting a real bore. Is that <laughs> <laughs> you say that like you're proud of it. Have you been a good girl or something? I'm know? trying. Yes? Yes. What do you think the reason is that you've been, uh, you get misquoted, uh, not misquoted, but they seem to take a lot of your quotes and... Uh, and well, I don't know, perhaps I just talk differently. Mm. You know, country people do, very often. You mean, as much as you've been around the world and everything else, you still consider yourself a country person? An Australian, mm -hmm. yes, country yeah. person, yes. What is it about the country? Uh, your husband, um, when he was on this program, talked about the fact that the land, uh, he kept talking about the land, uh, you seem to have that same feeling. What is it about the country that seems to... Uh... I don't know. It's something that if you, if you grow in the land, you love it. Mm. And it's, um, you need it as a physical thing, like a gum tree, or I think lots of city people need it. Or if you're a city person, you adore the city lights and the asphalt, and if you get sort of four miles from the bitumen, you feel miserable, absolutely mm. miserable. Yeah. And lots of city people need the sea. I think everyone needs a dimension of nature, either the air or the sea or the land. Mm. Some people uh, like to have the best of both worlds, live far enough out but close enough so they could hop into the city really quickly mm. if they wish to, you know. Well, they're lucky. Yes. <laughs> but enjoying country life, uh, when you come to the city, does that bother you when you have to spend a lot of time in the city? Or no, do you I love the city, too. Yes. In fact, I like most everything. Hmm. Well, that's nice to hear. <laughs> it's, uh, it was interesting to me to see how tall you were. I didn't realize uh, how tall you were. Was, it, was being tall a problem for you when you were a girl? Well, it's all rather difficult, yes. When you're 13 mm. or 14 and you're this big, you have, yeah. to take, <laughs> you have to take bets on with your school friends on having a dance with the smallest man, in, in, uh, the smallest boy at the school, mm. you know, the supper dance or some terribly important, marvellous dance in our day, long mm. years ago, which you probably didn't remember. Yeah, you used to have... <laughs> <laughs> you, yes, I do. You, you, you'd have a supper dance, which was a really big deal. Mm. And I always used to have that with the littlest boy, always. Did I won lots of money. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> did you actually seek him out, or what would they no, think? I certainly not. I waited no. to be asked. You did. I waited to be asked with knees bent underneath my long dress, and then when he came and asked me would I have a dance, I'd stand up and his face would fall, and I'd fix him with a glare and say, "You will, won't you?" And off <laughs> we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it, did you did you become tall suddenly? Uh, the reason I asked it happened to me. Uh, I was I went away one summer, and when I came back, I was five inches taller for some reason or another. It just happened. Did it happen to you suddenly, or was it uh, a gradual thing? With I you? don't remember. I think it probably did. Mm. Did you did you seek out your husband because he was tall? Certainly not. He found me. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 What about the, 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 there seems to be a great deal of emphasis in things that I have read about you being a private person. Do you consider yourself to be a private person? Not anymore. No? Not anymore. It's something that you accept after a few years that being in public life, mm. you don't have a private life. And once you accept that, it gets much easier. Mm. But I hope when the public life's over, then you can go back to being a private person again. Well, that's a, that brings me to a good question. Uh, when this public life is over, do you make plans now about for when this public life is going to be over? No. 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 This is an election year, understand? Ah. <laughs> yeah. In other words, it's not going to end no, for a while. No, no, a... no seriously. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, the children are at a stage where they're all growing up and um, you, know, you don't know what tomorrow brings, so we'll just play it along. Mm. They, they had a nickname for you, something about boo-boo or something, which I read in the paper, saying that... Uh, you do make boo-boos on occasion, where you say things that you really didn't, or you meant to say them, but you didn't mean them the way they were said. I'm coming back to that again for a reason. Uh, there was some place that it was a big furor because you said some place was the end of the earth or something. Oh, yes. Oh, that oh, was right. awful. <laughs> uh, it, it, it was, um, we'd been to Mikathara, and I was talking where, to where, where is Mikathara? Mikathara is 750 miles northwest of Perth. It is the alternate airport for Perth. Mm. And I was talking to some Greek ladies in Sydney, and I was talking about the, the problems of isolation for everybody. You know, they from language and custom, and, and, and uh, the country people from Mikathara of actual physical isolation. And I said, imagine, because two jumbos had been um, put into Mikathara, 
the week before, as an, uh, when Perth Airport was closed. And I said, uh, can you imagine landing from Europe at Mikathara, which at that stage had had 50 points of rain in two years, um, you'd be at the other end of the world. Is that what I said? You at the end of the earth. The other end of the earth, right. instead of the other side of the world. I see. see? Yeah. And apparently it was, it was just said in the Perth papers that it was at the other end. I said Mikathara was the other end of the earth. And I went, didn't see it in the, in the Eastern Australian papers, and I was in Perth the next week, fortunately, and Lady Court said to me, Tammy, dear, why did you? You shouldn't have. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> she said, dear, did you have to say it like that? People were so hurt. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, dear, you really must learn to be a little bit more tactful. You must. It's, not, it's really not fair. And I said, Lady Court, what are you talking about? And she said, look at these headlines. And there it all was, you see. So I rang up people frantically because it wasn't what I meant. And I'd hate to hurt them. I think they're the most marvelous people who live in the outback, and the women particularly, mm. in what they do. And I'd enjoyed myself out there. So it was just one of those awful knots I got myself into. Let me just, let me just, uh, there's a book that you put out called uh, From the oh, Better Half. Oh, oh, just just one. Oh, that's a very old book. You must get well, up to date. I'm a very old compare. Oh. Yeah, wait, wait. <laughs> um, it said here. Wait, wait, I'm trying to get where the first one is. 28. Here we are. It says I was talking to a group. These are your quotes. You've put this book together. So, I was talking to a group of Australians in Montreal when a young boy said, "Who are you?" I said, "I'm Tammy Fraser. Who are you?" The lad replied, "I'm Prince Andrew." You said I was terrified he would think I was a shot putter. Did I? Well, I don't actually. <laughs> I think that's what it's. Uh, why? I mean, I can understand all the confusion, maybe, with all of the morale. Where was this? At the Olympics or something? Or? It was at the Olympic reception, I think, yes. Ah. Yes. Yes. And I thought, I didn't realize he was talking. I went over to talk to our Australian side and mm. really barged in. It was just one of those sort of things. Mm. And then you, talk, you said something else, too, in this book about when you first went to Canberra, you weren't very happy with it. You thought it was a dreadful place because it was filled with bald heads. Yes, it was. But now... It's a... <laughs> it might still, Why is, how does, how does... It might still be, but everyone looks so young now. Oh, I see. You yes, see? Right, because so you've been there for a while. Right? Yes, like yeah. 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> and there's lots of young ones. Mm. Let's take a look at the... We have some, uh, some film that we were able to, uh, to shoot of the lodge. I don't know how many people have ever seen the lodge, but it would be nice to have a look at it, the, the residents, uh, different places. And I suppose I could ask you uh, what we're looking at here. Uh, I think we're going to look at it. There it is, there. Okay. Home sweet home. There it is. Mm. And the garden I put in in the front, which is all full, filled with white flowers, with not one in it at the moment. Mm. The look. Yeah, how many rooms are there in there? Uh? Oh, goodness, I don't know. But the main reception rooms is a dining room and a sitting room. And the front hall, which we're in now, looking through to the dining room, mm. with the Donald Friend um, Trojan horse on the left-hand side and a cedar Tasmanian table on the right-hand side, which mm. was um, given to us for the Australiana Fund. That clock was also given to us um, by a supporter of the Australiana Fund from Canberra. It came from her family, and it's a very old, good grandfather clock brought out from England with her family who came here in the um, mid-1800s. The dining room, mm. um, the, the table's not original, the chairs are, and that's looking how, how old? How old would those chairs be? Uh? Well, um, 50 years old, which is as old as the house is. Right. Actually, that's a that is a, an emblem on the back of those chairs. Uh, yes, it see. is. Um, oh, there it is. There, there it is. It's PM. Right. It means Prime Minister for some and post mortem for others. <laughs> 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 Depending but what they've just served. It's a Chippendale pattern, and then you look at it and you think it can't be. It isn't. It won't be. But it is. <laughs> PM. Now, where are that we here? That is the drawing room. Do you spend a lot of time in this room? room? Right? That's where I receive diplomatic wives and that sort of thing and um, have people come in, you know, the sort of seating place for ten. This is a little kangaroo clock the Australian fund bought, which is quite mad. It was made for the Australian, <laughs> Australian market. It's got a sort of a clock in its thing. It doesn't move its head. Edmund Barton, our first prime minister ever for a federation in a pottery thing by Nelson Illingsworth, which is quite nice. So people keep rubbing his nose and it's getting black. <laughs> uh, this is the library. Um, where the PM watches TV in his copious spare time. And there's a little um, wool wagon on the front there. You might see it in another picture in a minute, mm. which was made by a man from Wagga called James Hassel, which is the old, beautifully in brass, exactly to scale. It's a, it's a lot less formal than I thought it would be. It looks very comfortable. It's a very cosy house. Yes, and, you know, very it's nice. very, very relaxed. People feel relaxed when they go there. That's an Eric Wilson painting on loan from the gallery. 
Society. Is that is that something else that you obtained that, that painting? Or I chose it? the paintings from the gallery yeah. um, that that I wanted, which was nice. Was that um, part of your Australiana Fund idea? Except that's bought by the Australiana Fund. That um, painting was the first Labour Prime Minister. Mm. Barton was a Liberal, and that's the first Labour one, Mr. Watson. Right. The Visitor's Book. Right. We've got Lord Bruce's Visitor's Book there, which is interesting. There's some names there that... Um, Do you get to look through all those things? Where, uh, um, oh. uh, well, I, I, this is the... Um, the Silvers it was one of the things I found of Lord Bruce's from the archives. It was presented to him by the City of Sheffield. And you brought those back. Well, that was sort of nice, wasn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> sort of looked there. <laughs> tell, tell me about the... Um, the, uh, the Australiana Fund, this is an idea of your own, the Australiana Fund. Uh. Well, it was an idea of, of a, a lot of us who felt that Australian furniture and silver and things, pictures, um, you sort of heritage should be in these official establishments. Mm. Um, were they not being put in uh, up until no, this time? No, there wasn't anything in the lodge when we arrived that meant that another Prime Minister had even lived there. Mm. There was nothing that you walked in and thought, oh, that's, you know, part of our history and that belonged to so-and-so or that means that... that um, Lyons or Scullin or Bruce or Menzies or whoever, you yeah. know, was there. And um, I just felt it was a pity. And when people come to the house, uh, they very often don't have a chance to go to galleries or other places visiting heads of state because they're all in talks. And so it's interesting to talk about something, say this is the sort of furniture that was made, you know, we are only 150 years old, nearly mm. 200 years old, and look at it, this was what was done, it's a copy of Britain, <coughs> da 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 da. Um, and generally just show them Australian things instead of just everything. And I mean, I hope the Australiana Fund will go on to commission um, proper candlesticks for the lodge, for instance, because we don't have any candlesticks of our own, and um, uh, commission things from present living artists, the mm. very best of their kind, so that um, people will take an interest, you know, the public will take an ongoing interest. And I hope to keep it open. You know, we've opened the houses mm. um, yes, I know. E last year, and we hope to go on doing that. It's, uh, it's just interesting to me that there seems to be a great deal of responsibility and you seem a lot more relaxed than I would expect somebody who has to handle all of that, you know. Can, may, may I just ask one question? I don't mean to get, uh, I don't even want to get political here. I'm not taking any sides or something. I was just wondering. Uh, uh, you, one of the more disgraceful episodes, uh, I'm going to put myself in a hot seat here. I, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, one of the more disgraceful episodes of, uh, um, I think, that have taken place here has been the... Uh, the pelting of the Prime Minister with things. I, 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 you know, like, if you don't agree with somebody's philosophy, I, that's, that's fine with me if someone doesn't agree with somebody's uh, uh, political philosophies or whatever. Uh, there are democratic means by which people can go through to change all of that. But uh, you've been on his arm uh, when some of that has happened. Uh, what kind of feeling goes through you when there are people uh, uh, throwing things at the, at the PM, uh, yourself and... Uh, the well, I probably think, um, first of all, Damn, I wish I'd worn that other thing I wanted to chuck out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you Se <laughs> Se secondly, I think, I think the police are absolutely marvellous to be so patient, because, you know, you can see how, how patient the police are mostly. I think mm. they're absolutely brilliant. Thirdly, I think um, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad I'm a liberal, because, you know, they're not us out there doing that. So I don't know who they are, I don't know whether the comms or the Labour Party, the sort of difference becomes more and more obscure with each sort of quarterly adjustment of people and policies. But I like the, I think the idea of, of frightening old people in wheelchairs, I mean, it's the sort of thing you expect at political meetings, I suppose, or expect at, at universities. Mm. But when they come into the arena and frighten old 90-year-olds at a terminal nursing home, I don't see any point in it, really. I just don't see what they hope to gain. What does he say? Who, Fraze? Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, how does Fraze feel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Fraze thinks that, <laughs> that the Prime Minister of Australia, we, we stand for freedom. Australians are all free, loving, independent people, and the Prime Minister of this country, whatever party he belongs to, should be able to walk wherever he wants in freedom, mm. like mm. everyone else in the country. And that's his basic philosophy. And he goes in and out the front door whether security say to or not. You mean sometimes they tell him to go in the back and he won't do it? Yeah, that's happened a couple of times. Mm. You see, and we sort of ploughed through the melee and sort of ended up covered in spit and stuff, and it's not much fun. No. But, um, you know, he, he says that, that all Australians have to, you know, should be free, mm. and he's leading the vanguard of that, I suppose. I have a little, uh, if I can, please, thank you very much. I did want you to go away from here empty-handed, just something you can look at for a couple of days. They're really pretty. They went to a lot of oh, trouble to find the pink ones. I love little. being bunched. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love having you here, and I think it's wonderful. This is coming, thank you.